Hi, Patrick here from Half Cheetah Wheel View, and it's Dollar Tree Theater time. That's right, Dollar Tree Theater. Now, I have to admit, um, things got changed up here. Uh, I had a winning entry for for this week's uh, uh, for this week's challenge. Um, uh, you guys voted for a movie for me to watch and to review, and it was called. Uh, Redwood uh, Massacre Annihilation uh, and quite honestly I was very much looking forward to watching it um, it has Danielle Harris in it and Damian Puckler uh, of course Danielle Harris you know uh, everybody's favorite uh, screen queen and um, she's done a lot of great movies and uh, Damian Puckler who was awesome as Meisner on, on, on Grimm I mean I was looking forward to this uh, and then I watched it and I had never seen anything in a mainstream horror movie as I had when I watched this movie. Um, and I certainly never expected to see anybody at the level of these actors. Uh, you know, um, <laughs> to get, get, you know, get asked to do this. Um, I guess I'm going to have to tell you what it is because then you guys will sit there and go like, what? Um, so, I mean, it's pretty extreme. It's graphic. It's a slasher movie. I get that. It's part of the game. It's part of horror, whatever. But I had never seen a graphic scene of necrophilia until this movie. Now, I'm an old man. I've seen thousands of horror movies. Um, until Unless you're getting movies like from Rick, you know, the extreme stuff that with actors that no one even heard of except for their small base. Um, I would have never suspected anything that, um, uh, I would have never suspected that, uh, uh, Daniel Harris or Damian Puckler, especially him, since he's acted in the scene, would, would do a movie featuring uh, a graphic scene of necrophilia. So, that being said, um, yeah, I, I just didn't feel comfortable uh, talking about the film. Uh, I, I would have been, I think I would have been ir irresponsible to sit there and say, yeah, I like the movie and whatnot, and then you guys could watch it and get see that scene. I think that would have been some blowback my way, and that's something I really don't want. Uh, I actually didn't really even want to watch that movie after that, and I didn't. Um pretty depressing actually because like I said I was looking forward to it um and Mr. Bones had actually seen the first one and he he actually uh said oh my gosh the first one's tight and then we watched the second one and he's sitting there going like they ruined it and yeah they did on, a, on more than one ways other than the necrophilia scene so uh so we had to go back to plan b which is Cheetah's choice and so, after watching a movie like that, you needed to cleanse the palate a little bit. <laughs> so, what better way to cleanse the palate from watching a, a scene of necrophilia than to go talk to Walt Disney? And so, that's what we did. We watched the North Avenue Irregulars. That's right. This is from 1979. Uh, this is rated G. Uh, this, is act, this is one of the last live action Disney movies that was rated G. Uh, soon after that, they pretty much went all PG or onward. Um, so yeah, uh, I got the, uh, the North Avenue Irregulars. I got this at the library for $1. So that's our Dollar Tree criteria met. And let me tell you a little bit about the movie. Uh, it's really short. It's a plot's real simple, but it's charming as hell. Uh, a new pastor played by Edward Herman comes into a new t a town called New Campton, and he takes over a small church, Presbyterian church, and um, and he meets uh, he meets uh, Ann Woods, who seems to, who's placed as secretary, but she seems a little frosty toward him, is because her father was basically was sort of pushed out uh, into retirement, and so uh, she he sees uh, the new pastor, his name's Mike Wood. Uh, Mike Hill, uh, uh, yeah, he comes into play and he, you know, he, he, he wants her to stay on, so she does, and then 
you know, then he, then he's in a, in a gesture of faith says, you know, you don't have to do everything yourself. We can, do, we can have other people in the church help us out. So he goes ahead and he asks one of the, he asks this Mrs. Mrs. Delaney if, uh, if she, if she would take over the sink fund, which is basically the fund, the emergency fund for the church. Well, her husband got a hold, gets a hold of it and he bets them all the money on a horse. Uh, they lose the money, uh, Twelve hundred dollars, which was a lot of money back in that back in that day. Uh, the uh, uh, pastor Mike tries to stop the uh, tries to stop the bet, and uh, he fails, and so he's out the money, and they're trying to figure out figure out how to get it back, and um, and he tries to tell the police. The police are in on it, so they're not much help, and he discovers that the whole town is you know there's a there's a lot of corruption in the town, so. He decides to to rally and and speak publicly, speak publicly about it, and uh, try to get the citizens all riled up to to break this gambling ring, which no one really seems intent. You know, no one seems really interested in doing. But two treasury agents have heard him talk, and so they come on in there and they're going like, "Well, maybe maybe we could help you." Uh, the agents were played by. Uh, they're played by Michael Constantine, and I'll tell you why that's important later. And then uh, Steve Franken plays his partner, Tom Voorhees, but not spelled the same. <laughs> I know it's the first. I heard that too. I'm going, like, nah, that's that's just too that's just too coincidental, right? Uh, no, it wasn't. It wasn't. He's not spelled the same. There's no H, but it's pronounced the same. So, uh, well, he he rallies the. He wants to get to the bottom of this. Um, and he says, well, no, no one will rally, no one will help. And, um, but they said there's some church ladies that decide that they will, they'll help him. They'll help uh, Father Mike out. And the church ladies are a, a bunch of familiar faces. Um, uh, we had Barbara Harris, uh, uh, who, who, who plays, she's a really delightful character actor. She plays, uh, uh, Mrs. Miss Vicki Sims. You had Karen Valentine looking super cute in this movie. Wow, she was she was always really cute, and I mentioned her because her and Michael Constantine had starred in a show together called Room Two Twenty Two, in the early seventies. Uh, we also had Susan Clark, uh, who played Ann Woods. Uh, she was actually an A lister at the time of this movie was made. She was a big star. She was uh, she she was doing big movies. Uh, she went on later on to marry Alex Karras and starred in Webster. Then you have Cloris Leachman, who played uh, Claire Porter. Um, and, of course, you remember her from Mary Tyler... Well, some of you might. Uh, remember her from Mary Tyler Moore and from the show Rhoda. And uh, uh, and then we had uh, Virginia Capers as Cleo Jackson. Um, and we saw some other faces, too, like uh, Alan Hale Jr. played the skipper on Gilligan's Island. He played Harry the Hat. And young Melora Hardin, who has grown up to become quite a, a beautiful actress, uh, she actually was a child star back then, and she played uh, Carmel Hill. So, uh, all this in place, they the, the women come together, and they decide to take on the mob in the town. And uh, at first, the first time they, they try to bust them, it goes all south. Uh, they're, they're exposed, people see them, you know, it doesn't work well. The, everybody knows they're trying to set them up the, uh, the gamblers know that they're being set up to be arrested, so it doesn't work very well. Uh, but then they decide, you know, you know, instead of trying to catch these guys like that, why don't we hit them where it, where it hurts and try to find where they're doing their money uh, drops at, and we'll take the bank. And so that's what they try to do, and and they start following these guys everywhere, harassing them basically, until the mob boss. Uh, uh, gets a little irritated and he says, "Put a hit on him." <laughs> so they do. They they blow up the uh, blow up the church, and uh, it looks really bad for everybody. Uh, F Father Mike's out of a job. The church is damaged. It's closed down, and um, and then Ann Woods, who've been uh, uh, very much against this whole shenanigans, uh, after seeing the church and basically her her dad's legacy uh, burned up. Um, well, she gets mad. She says, you know, I want to take another run at these guys. And so they rally the troops. And with the church on the, you know, on the edge of being closed, 
they take it to the mob one more time. And, um, hey, it's Disney. What do you expect is going to happen, right? <laughs> it's all about the journey. And uh, this movie was a lot of fun. Uh, I really enjoyed watching it. It uh, took me back to my, or, you know, back to my, or my kid days. I was 15 years old when this came out. Um, I remember watching it way back when, which is why I grabbed it here. here. Uh, just a piece of nostalgia. Um, so uh, I remembered it very, very well when I watched it. I, um, I remember how much fun it was, and I, and I laughed quite a bit. Uh, the last, the big last third of the movie is hilarious. Um, this, all in all, this is perfect family movie. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of familiar faces. If you're older like I am, a lot of familiar faces. Uh, you know, most a lot of these folks here now are all gone. Uh, you know, Michael Constantine, Alan Hale Jr. Um, you know, um, but they're still kicking around. Edward Herman. Edward Herman went on to do uh, Gilmore Girls. And um, all of them had really nice careers. Uh, Ruth Buzzy's in this in this film. I mean, there's a lot of faces in here that you would recognize. So um, this is unexpected. I've never seen it out in the wild before. So, um, but you could probably pick this up pretty easily at, on eBay or Amazon. You know, no problem at all. Uh, I'm sure there's copies out there. Um, uh, well, or or maybe no yeah, Disney. Yeah. Uh, well, so yeah, there you go. Uh, no special features, of course. This is an early, 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 uh, uh, release. And you can tell that because the box is really nice. Even this person who had it took good care of it. They even have the old uh, pamphlet in there, which is a sign of care. Uh, so, uh, so that's my Dollar Tree Theater for this week. Uh, we are... Uh, uh, Dollar Tree Theater comes out once a week, and um, in it, where a bunch of us are led by our fearless leader, Hobbs Whore. Uh We each watch and review a movie that we either get from the Dollar Tree or anything that's a dollar twenty-five and under. So, if you spent less than a dollar twenty-five, it counts as a Dollar Tree movie. So this week, I decided to try a little bit something a little bit different. Uh, I decided to go with a little bit. A little bit more variety. Uh, instead of just doing the two films and the cheetah's choice, we decided to do three films. And these are the films that we're going to be voting. You guys, you guys are going to be voting on for us to watch. Uh, and the polls out already in my community tab. So if you just go to my community tab, hit that, you'll see the uh, you'll see the poll there. So we're voting for Kangaroo Jack. Uh, we are voting for Canadian Bacon with John Candy. And then we decided to toss it up a little bit by throwing Pentagram at you guys. <laughs> so you got two comedies and then you got some witchcraft. I mean, I mean what, where else can you do that, right? Uh, so that's the, that's the movies that we'll be voting on for, um, for next week. So this week, this Tuesday coming out is going to be the North Avenue Irregulars. And then it's going to be one of these three right here. So you guys pick. Or you can pick for the Cheetah's Choice. And uh, we'll come back with something fun. Uh, I know this one is probably probably not expecting to see a, a Disney rated G from a, from a horror channel. Or I think it's a horror channel. It's, a, it's some kind of channel. You guys tell me. Um... If you're new to the channel, uh, please consider giving us a sub, hit the bell, leave a comment. Um, we appreciate it and very much. Uh, we do answer the comments. And uh, yeah, and we will see you soon on the flippity flip. Peace.